Many of the higher end mountain bikes today come with tubeless ready rims and tires. These carbon wheels that came on a giant trans advance are a good example. This bike also came with Schwabe tubeless ready tires and the TLE on the side of the tire, even though upside down here in this video, is Schwalbe's indication that these are tubeless easy, also referred to as tubeless ready. Typically these wheels will come with tubes installed along with a regular rim strip. You should also get valve stems such as these and some rim tape. This is tubeless rim tape that's going to replace the regular rim strip that comes on the bike. If for some reason these aren't included with your bike, you can always purchase these from your local bike shop. So in this video, I'm going to show you how this is done. The first thing you need to do is get the wheel off the bike and deflate the tire by pressing on the valve stem. Now we're going to work the bead off the rim just as if you were changing a tube if you had a flat tire. The bead on this rim was a bear to get off. The giant rims have a channel that lock in the bead and it really locked it in and took a lot of effort to get that off. Now we're going to get this rim strip off. This is the one that comes on the bike that you run with a tube to keep the tube from getting pinched in those holes. So we're just going to dig our fingernails underneath, peel it off, then you can set it aside because we're not going to need that anymore. And now we're going to put on the tubeless tape in place of that rim strip. Locate the hole where the valve stem comes out. This is going to be our reference starting point for the tape. We're going to do about two spokes to the left or right of that hole. So start your tape and by the way have a pair of scissors handy because you're going to need to cut the tape when you're done. So get it started and again locate either two or three spokes to the side of the hole of the valve stem and get it started. Put it right in the middle and really press down hard with your thumb because you're going to have to pull this tape super tight. As you pull it, you should hear it popping as you stretch it out. So again, hold that tape really firmly and put a lot of effort in this. And if you have someone who can help you hold down the tape, that's even better. So again, just stretch it, pulling it hard, keeping it right in the center of the rim. So work it all the way around. And then we're going to go one layer on this. Because that bead was so tight, I'm only going to do one layer. You could do two layers if you wanted to. But go past the hole where the valve stem comes out and really work that tape in with your thumb. The starting point may be beating up a little bit, so just press that down. So again, stretching it hard. We're going to overlap it. And we're going to go two or three spokes on the other side of the valve stem hole. And then we're going to make our cut. So after you've gone two or three spokes on the other side, get your scissors and cut the tape. Press it down hard with your thumb. Now go around the whole rim, inspect the tape visually, and just make sure there are no bubbles in the tape. Locate the valve stem hole again. Now it's time to make a hole in it so we can press our valve stem through. Take a small flat blade screwdriver. Once you have the screwdriver in place, move your fingers out of the way in case it pops through hard. You don't want to cut your fingers with that. I make two slits, so make kind of an X. And then once I'm done, I will spin the screwdriver around just to make the hole big enough for a valve stem. And that's about how big the hole needs to be. Now it's time to put the tire on the bike and locate the directional indication in case your tire is one directional like this one. Work the tire onto the rim. Again, this is the same step you would use if you were changing a tire. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the tube back in and this step is somewhat optional but it's one I recommend. We're going to have the tube inflated and we're going to let it sit for at least an hour and what that does is it presses the tube onto the tape and really seats that tape onto the rim. So work the tire back on the bike after you have the tube inside. And again, since this one was such a hard tire to get on with such a tight bead, I have to use a tire lever. So now we're going to inflate it to about 25 to 30 PSI. And we're going to let it sit for at least an hour. If you can let it sit overnight, then that's even better. 
After it sits for a while, we're going to deflate the tire and we're going to get the tube out. Make sure it's fully deflated and then work the bead into the middle of the rim and then I'm going to use a tire lever to get this off. It makes it easier. Now that we have one of the beads worked off, we're just going to pull the tube out and we're going to leave the other bead on the rim. No need to take the tire completely off the rim at this point. So get the tube out, set it aside, and I would recommend holding onto that tube and carrying it with you on a ride just in case you get a flat and the sealant doesn't plug the hole. Now we're going to put the valve stem in, and you may have to put a little effort into this because the tape is still kind of tight. Push it in, and now this particular one uses an O-ring. Some do, some do not. The ones that came with this giant trance have an O-ring that goes in the valve stem before you put on the lock nut. So I'm going to work on the O-ring, and then I'm going to grab the lock nut. Every valve stem has to have a lock nut to put it on. And when you put these on, you don't have to do it crazy tight. So go ahead and thread that onto the valve stem. Don't use any pliers. And what I do is I push down on the top of the valve stem with my thumb. And then I thread the, thread the lock nut on. Again, don't do this super tight. Just nice and snug with your fingers. Now this particular one is rectangular shape. And so I need to make sure I turn it so it's lined up nicely inside that channel. So I turn that, line it up, and I'm good to go. Now it's time to add our sealant. And I do this by hanging the wheel on something. I use a hammer and a bench vise. And this allows me to put the solution in and work the tire onto the rim easy without the solution spilling on the ground. So this is kind of a large tire, so I'm going to use two cups. So shake the solution really well, whichever solution you prefer. I like using stand solution. It's what I've used originally, and I am a creature of habit, and it works very well for me. So again, two scoops of the stand solution, pouring it into the tire, making sure you don't spill it out. And now we're going to work the bead back onto the rim. And I usually get it off the hammer there and just work it on again making sure you don't spill it. Once you get the beads on the tire the solution can kind of go to the bottom and then you can work the bead on from the top to finish it up. Using my tire levers here because this is again a very tight bead on this rim. Now you should have both beads on the rim and before we inflate the tire we're going to spray some soap bubbles between the bead and the rim. This allows the bead to easily slip into that channel. It also gives some surface area to the air, so it makes it easier to inflate, especially if the bead is somewhat loose. I don't expect that with this tire. And it also shows you where some leaks may occur. And by the way, make sure the bead covers the valve stem. Hang the wheel back up and put the valve stem in about the 7 or 8 o'clock position. I'm going to use an air compressor because I have one and it makes this job a lot easier. So I'm going to thread on this adapter and that just goes onto the valve stem and that way I can use my air compressor. Now you can do this with a floor pump sometimes. Sometimes a floor pump will not work and you have to use compressed air, either a CO2 cartridge or an air compressor like I'm doing. If you use an air compressor, make sure you don't overinflate the tire. I would recommend about 25 PSI. The final step is to shake the tire back and forth. This allows the solution to get all inside the tire on the sidewalls, and you should have no bubbles coming out. And the, the soap there will allow you to see those bubbles in case you have any leaks. Now we have a tubeless tire. Thanks for watching.